The views and opinions of this program are those of the host, guests, and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Today's episode of Market Talk is brought to you by Growmark FS. Keeping up with the latest in ag is a challenge, to say the least, but there are experts nearby ready to help. You'll find them at your local FS. You can trust them to bring you customized agronomic grain and energy solutions bored of the latest thinking. That's because FS specialists receive continuous training that keeps them current on the latest trends, practices, and technologies. So you'll get local expertise that's both exceptional and up-to-date. Visit FSSystem.com to learn how FS is bringing you what's next. Well, the best way that I could sum up Thursday's market trade action, at least in the grains and oil seeds, ugly. I really can't think of any other word to describe it. It was a rough day overall, and uh, we are going to dive into why we saw the markets break down the way they did. Joining us here today with market analysis, we welcome in our good friend Brian Doherty, Senior Market Advisor at Total Farm Marketing. Brian, thank you for being here as always, and um, maybe you have a better adjective than I did there for how these grain markets looked on Thursday. Mine was ugly. Uh, what's your thoughts? Well, I would say disappointing. You know, we've been kind of carrying this idea for some time that supplies are relatively tight. We've got some spring weather that mm, you can argue has some question marks behind it, uh, areas of too dry and then other areas where it's just been cool and wet and soils aren't drying out quickly. And, and you know, something that you don't think a market would capitulate and tip over on. But the overriding bigger picture is um, just, a, you know, a host of, you know, strings of negative news so you know a year ago at this time we we're talking about kind of connecting dots we had declining uh, carry out on reports uh, uh, good export sales and this year we got just the opposite we've got export sales that are dismal in fact we had a corn cancellation today from china uh, uh the second one now in in about a week a week and a half two weeks um and then you've got, uh, you know, just the fact. The fact is we can talk about weather and planting delays and these type of things. But the fact is on Monday, the market got news that uh, corn planting was at 14%. Five-year average is 11. So if you just look at that, that's not a bullish figure within itself. And um, the wheat market continues to, to uh, probably be the leader of this. We, we've argued this for a long time. The funds are short. They continue to add to shorts. It's the easiest thing to do when you're making money is continue to do what we're doing. Um, you know, all this rhetoric about the Black Sea and, you know, maybe Russia not extending the agreement. It seems like the more that talk is out there, the faster wheat prices go down, which is counterintuitive. But I think the world is just uh, deflationary on commodities right now. Uh, recession concerns continue to sort of surface. And, and that was indicated today and again on an economic slowdown first quarter. Yeah, a lot of things to unpack here. And you mentioned the funds a couple of times, and it sounded like a lot of heavy fund selling once again. I have to think, too, uh, with May expiration out there, having to get out of some long positions possibly in this market. And, you know, you throw all that heavy fund selling together, you couple that with the computer algo type trading and just – we break through some of those resistance levels and the path of least resistance just to the downside led by those wheat markets you mentioned, Brian. Led by the wheat market and corn was no exception today. July corn futures had a gap that existed since last last uh, July, uh, 595 and a half. And when the market fell that this morning, it looked like, well, maybe that's a, a good target point and a holding point is close to the to the lows that we saw last last summer and boy prices just continued to slide and you had a close near the low of the day not a good sign so when you have these kind of bear markets here uh now you're getting some acceleration often markets accelerate toward the bottom but there is no good bottoming activity right now stochastics rsis those type of indicators are showing oversold but even on the stochastics where you have two lines that basically cross over slow and a fast moving average, they haven't crossed over. So there's no buy signal to those who are looking at those charts. They're just prepared to buy as it is right now. The momentum is still down. Um, wheat's probably the biggest head scratcher. We waste a little time peeling off a dollar and in a trend that continues to move lower. Yes, historically, wheat might still be considered somewhat high, but historically, input prices have never been this high. So, you know, everything's a little bit relative. At some point, an industry has to try and at least have a vision of making money. 
And that's a concern for any row crop producer right now. Well, and with the wheat market too, one more thing that I think uh, perception, so to speak, versus reality, the rains that we got in the Southern Plains, welcome rains, much needed rains, but probably too little too late to help out that KC wheat crop yet. Here we are moving lower on, on some of that news, I think as well, Brian. Yeah, it's discouraging that the market just can't seem to get any heavy lifting done and, and buying interest. So, you know, we might be talking a week from now about something totally different, but spring wheat prices continue to really cave. Uh, there was, you know, some legitimate concerns with some delayed plantings and less than I knew conditions. Those still exist, but there again, you've got a market that has acted like it's just, you know, we just busted a drought as an example on the 18th. Okay, so you're only talking nine days ago. Minneapolis wheat was at uh, 8.94 on September, and here we are at 7.90. So we gave up a dollar just that quick. That's a big percentage change in any market year, let alone in in just a very short period of time. And so it exasperates the trend. But to your point, you had first notice day, or you have first notice day tomorrow. So anybody who's long, they run the risk of delivery. So often you'll see people maybe move out or roll and. Um, you know, we didn't really see that. You'd kind of expect that May corn down 14 and a half. You'd think if they rolled to July to go long, July might only be down eight or something. Well, July's down 19 and a half. So, um, so the premium of July to September, December uh, continues to get battered on the guy uh, on the uh, uh, the guidelines, at least I'll call it that. That that Brazil's second crop corn is coming along very well. They'd be more readily available to the market. And with China canceling corn today, it didn't help. You mentioned the export sales as well. Pretty lackluster again this week on the grain side. I've asked this question a couple of times this week. I'll ask you as well. Are you worried about demand destruction here in this market trade? Does it feel like we're seeing some of that concern right now in this grain market? Well, there's about a four to 500 million bushel decline already in the books with the USDA uh, from last year to this year. And some of that is demand destruction, if you will. Some of it is just that when prices get high, uh, the end user may change their method of buying. But certainly, you know, but we're getting to levels here where in theory, you should be, there shouldn't be too much demand destruction. It's just, it's a kind of uncomfortable price for end users to be paying. Uh, but things are under pressure here. I look at new crop corn prices on December. Uh, 550 couldn't hold this week. Now we're closer to 530. That slippery slope, as we've talked about all winter, all late fall and winter, is fully intact. And today we kind of fell, this week we kind of fell off the edge of the slope. So pretty tough there. Um, when a market goes down, too, you have selling, and a lot of that selling when the market hits certain points is what I call unintended selling. Mm -hmm. But, Jesse, if you're a buyer of corn, you hold a couple contracts, you're long, you're called long, you might say, well, if I lose 20 cents, I'm going to stop my risk. So those are called stop orders. And so on a day like today when the market goes down, when it hits that stop order, that order then becomes a market order to sell. And so when a stop order is triggered, You've got a sell order in the marketplace trying to find a buyer. Well, if you have lots of stops, you got to find lots of buyers. And usually that only happens at lower value. And that's part of what happened today again as well. I think a lot of long liquidation. To that point, you mentioned we have a market going down. We typically can see a lot of selling. But I also know we've talked before not to necessarily you know, get too caught up and make wholesale changes to a marketing plan based off of a couple of days. So I guess my question to you is, what should I be thinking about as a producer risk management wise, seeing these grain markets pulling back as much as they are? Should I be thinking about making some changes to my marketing plan or, or what should the strategy be here, Brian? Well, that's a great question. So, so we, I think we need to quickly decipher between old crop and new crop. Mm -hmm. And on the old crop, I've I've on previous uh, shows said, hey, you know, you got to recognize we're at high prices. So keep dabbling that out on a weekly basis. So in theory, you shouldn't have <coughs> copious amounts of supply on hand. If you do, you need to take a hard look at whether or not you want to let this go or a chunk of it go or hang on to it. Now, there will be some good strong basis plays likely in this environment. You've got farmers heading to the field. You've got the sell-off in the future, so we may see some good basis pops. So take advantage of that uh, if, it, if it does come along. 
as far as the new crop, I'd imagine everything's relative. So when we're at five seventy-five and then at five fifty or six dollars, none of it looks good when you're coming from a higher level. But if you're coming from a lower level, let's say corn futures in December were at four fifty two months ago and we're at five thirty, we're pretty happy on the rally. We're feeling better about things, right? Well, when you come from 630 and you go to 530, we're not very happy at all. I think time of year would probably tell me if you're kind of underwater on cost of production, I normally don't suggest this, but if you're behind on sales, I don't think I'd look to catch up. I'd probably still do option strategies like buy a put, buy a put, sell a call. But I don't think I would forward contract here. I, I've made the argument at 550 and above that look forward contract and hope it's your worst price. And if it is, you get a chance to sell more and average up as you as you sell more. Um, I, I just don't think we'd chase it right now. Uh, it's one person's opinion. Uh, the markets will do whatever they want, and you need to be aware that that's uh, um, you know a, certainly a risk. We are talking today with Brian Doherty, Senior Market Advisor at Total Farm Marketing. Brian, I want to touch on the livestock trade a little bit here. We did see some green on the screen in the cattle market. Have to think feeders especially taking advantage of the break in corn prices. I know we're watching a little bit lower cash activity start to work into this market-ish. Yeah. Your thoughts on this cattle trade, Brian? Yeah, so you're right. I mean, cash is kind of stagnant a little bit, can't go up every day. But, you know, when I look at cutout values again uh, this week, you know, showing some real muscle and strength, 310, 73, up a buck 49 on choice this morning, 290 on select, up 217. Those are some pretty encouraging and, and you know, strong numbers. And, and, I would suspect that they don't have the ability to last long because as it backs down the pipeline and consumers start looking at this, I think they've got to turn their attention to ample pork supplies at cheaper levels. And we're starting to see some reflection that we saw good export sales figure today for pork. And I think that's a, that's a price pricing thing. It's a, it's, it's a value. It's a good value. That's not going to shy people away from the market, but I think beef prices could be high enough. That would concern me. Um, that being said, the most recent cattle on feed, again, confirmed tight inventories, a little more than the market was looking for, maybe on a few numbers, but very, just a very, very little more. We're still looking at back-to-back -back years with the herds reducing. Um, hard to be bearish, and I'm not. Hard to be maybe bullish at these price levels, but let's say supportive, but cautiously so. You mentioned the hog market too, and uh, we had a really nice move on Wednesday, and then we came in with that big uh, export sales number. Yet yeah, the hog market just kind of finished up mixed. What's your thoughts there, Brian? Yeah, a really big day yesterday, a nice kind of bottoming activity on charts, maybe a kind of a V bottom there, and, and not a what I'd call a horrible close today, but when you look at June and we're 95 cents off the high, it's disappointing. Again, it's sort of that. It looked like you got some momentum going, you got something, and then the sellers come in or the buyers don't develop. And and that's indicative yet of, you know, the environment of kind of what we call bear markets. You, you get days where things look strong, but then the market fades it. So it was a good day yesterday, not so stellar today uh, compared to where it was early on. Uh, but technical um, and no, no damage on the charts, nothing like that. Uh, but just a little bit of a mixed value there. The, um, you know, we're approaching May and June hogs end in mid June. So they're only talking about six weeks away. And June right now is holding a $12 premium to the index. So something to think about if June makes much more in advance, let's say we get up to 92 to 94. Mm -hmm. uh, take a look where the index is and that the index isn't climbing real fast. It's probably an opportunity to recognize that over the next six weeks, you've got a contract that's holding premium. You might want to be a little defense of that contract. Well, Brian, I saw a little bit of green on the screen in the dairy market. Can you give us an update there? Well, I saw a little green, mostly in the front months that have just been better to no end. So, so I think the traders are taking the profits out of there, and you're talking the May and June contracts. As we move out and you look at something like the August contract, there is a new low established today, but also the market right now is trading four points higher in the highs yesterday than highs higher than yesterday. So we may be looking at what's called a bullish key reversal today, at least on the August contract. Um, and maybe some of the other deferred contracts, but not a lot of, you know, real 
big activity. The volume is pretty light in those, but in the, let's just call it the, the August contract, uh, we, might, we might be seeing a signal today that if you've been on the bear side of this, um, that we, we've got something that might indicate that we're, uh, we're seeing the market sort of exhaust itself. Or I got to be careful. That could be wishful thinking. I still don't think as I talked to dairies and we looked at the numbers, especially the milk production report, it's just really hard to get, um, to get really glued into something bullish when we're, we see basically just a little bit more each month and, and from the previous year. Well, Brian, as we uh, wrap things up today, any final thoughts you want to share with us? Well, I shared last week, you know, we're, we're approaching a time of year where things get really busy and you're going to be running maybe a lot of hours and whatnot. So just be careful, <laughs> slow down a little bit. It'll get done. Always has. Um, and so that would be my first, you know, reminder is, is just uh, from an outside source, um, be, be careful. Um, the second thing is, I think, I think the lesson of the last week in the grains is how fast things can go down. And we've talked about in the past, we saw that last June where things tipped over. So, so I'd let's just like to encourage, you know, farmers uh, on both sides, buyers of inventories and, and sellers that when prices are kind of at an area that they're not receiving enough friendly news, they kind of come out of their own weight. When they do, they can really fall apart quickly. So um, the point of it is, is, is uh, if your gut's telling you to, to do something, probably follow that. It's made up of a lot of years of experience. Well, Brian, if folks need a little advice to go along with some of those gut feelings as well, I know they can reach out to you and the team there at Total Farm Marketing, phone call, website, a lot of great ways to get in touch, isn't there? There is. 800-334-9779. Um, conversations are, are preferred. Uh, but email brian at totalfarmmarketing.com, and that's brian with a Y. Shoot it there, and I'll get back to you. To you and and or just check out our website, but um, a lot of great resources. I, I still think a conversation is the best way to kind of make sure you get the right interpretations. Well, and I always uh, appreciate the time here. And I know folks, again, can find you online too, as you mentioned, totalfarmmarketing.com. Brian Doherty, Total Farm Marketing, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. Jesse, thank you. Appreciate you and appreciate your show. And thank you. Uh, and, and the audience, thank you as well. Just keep it safe. Well, that is going to do it for the program today. Find us online, markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon.